Okay, in this video we're going to continue with normal distribution. We're going to look at how to calculate things on the calculator and then how to do an inverse normal problem where we're working backwards. Recall this situation. Women's height is distributed normally with that mean and that standard deviation. And again, if you put the mean here and go over one standard deviation in each direction, you trap 34% under the curve. So this would be 65 inches, that'd be 67.5, etc. And then the z-score has told us how many standard deviations away from the mean we are. It's a position on the x-axis. If we go right there to a z-score of negative 2, it means we are two standard deviations to the left of the mean. Also recall the empirical rule of 68%, 95%, 99% based on the number of standard deviations away from the mean we are. Suppose we wanted to find uh, if the probability that a randomly selected woman would have a height that's lower than 68 inches. So recall what we did was we would go to the z-score formula, the standardized z-score is what we need, and we get 1.2, meaning that this height of 68 inches is 1.2 standard deviations past the mean. Then we would go to the standard normal z-table, this puppy right here, and we go to 1.2 standard deviations below the mean, and it would trap 88.49% uh, below there. So we would know that the area under the curve was 0.8849. Alright, now we want to be able to use the calculator to do the same thing because it's a little bit quicker. So we have to prep for that. Now understand that we're going to find area under the curve. And in general, we're going to find any interval along the x-axis and the area under the curve over that interval. So we're going to stipulate that the area under the curve, the proportion of the population we're trying to find, I'm going to write that in, in brown, look at me color coding. If you're colorblind, you're in trouble, this ain't going to mean much, but it's a beautiful thing. Look at this, the lower end of the interval is green, the upper end is blue, the mean is black, and the standard deviation is red. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, all right, in this situation, find the proportion of women whose height, women whose height is between 63 and 68 inches. So we can draw a normal curve and we say, oh, okay, we want the proportion under the curve, the area under the curve between 63 and 68. There's the low end, green, upper end, blue. So what's the probability or the proportion in brown? Look at the color coding, I just, uh, okay, from 63 to 68. So we go normal CDF, we would type in the low end, the upper end of the interval, and then the mean and the standard deviation hit enter and we've got it. So now, let's go to the calculator. So what we can do is bust out the calculator. And let's clear the home screen out. Now where we're going is distribution. Second, distribution. That's where we get all the different distributions, including the normal CDFs. We're going to type in a 2. And um, I should actually have this say normal CDF. Sorry guys, but it's normal CDF. We're going to type in the low end, which is 63 the upper end, which is the 68, then the mean, which is 65, and the standard deviation, which is 2.5. Now see, the newer calculator is spiffy. You don't have to know that this is lower, upper, mean, standard deviation, because it asks you for it right here. So this new calculator is really nice, but watch what happens after we type that in and we hit enter. It pastes it to the home screen, and this is what you're going to have to type in, like I said, with the older calculator. So know that that's the lower and the upper end of the interval, and then the mean and the standard deviation. Once you hit enter, voila, you've got your area under the curve. So in this case, it would be about 67.3% of all women would have heights in there. We can go to another problem, okay? Uh, like, let's do one with, with men. We'd like to find the percentile uh, for a man who is six feet tall. So if we draw the normal distribution, we've got the mean at 70, we want to find the proportion of heights that are below 72 inches, so in brown we've shaded the area under the curve, standard deviation is 2.5. What we want to do is we want to go way past three standard deviations. Remember how we trap 99.7 percent within three standard deviations? We got to make sure we trap everything under the curve. So we're going to put just a, a crazy lower end of the interval down here. So that's what we're about to do. So we go back to the calculator. And again, we go second distribution to take us to those distributions. Uh, number two. And we're going to type in the lower end here is zero. The upper end is 72. So that's our interval. We want the area of the curve from zero to 72. So we're going to type in 72. Mean average is 70, uh, 
uh, center deviation is 2.5 and we're going to paste this puppy to the home screen. That's what it looks old school calculator wise. Hit enter and we find that 78.8% of our population is below 6 feet, so that's about the 79th percentile. Alright, now, go away. We're going to shift gears a little bit. And we're going to now do an inverse normal problem. So in this one, we're going to say, okay, find the unknown height sitting there of a woman who is at the third quartile, meaning she's at the 75th percentile, meaning that her height has 75% of all heights below it. Hmm, what should we do? Bye, Gully. The nerd says we can work through the z-score formula, the standardized score formula, and think about this. The unknown x goes here. The known mean of 65 is going to go here. The known center deviation of 2.5 is here. If we just had a z-score to put in there. Ah, but we can know that. Because check it out. We, there's only one z-score in any normal distribution that traps 75% below it. Now remember, a z-score tells us where we are on the x-axis. The proportion under the curve is what's under there. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a gander at the z-table again. And remember that the total area under the, z, under the curve below the z-score is what's shown in the middle of this distribution right here. So what we want is, what's the z-score that's going to trap 75% in here? Now the proportions are in the heart of the chart. So what we're looking for, everybody, is we're looking for the proportion that's trapped below a z-score that's really, really close to 75%. And we can see that these two guys are the ones that are close to 75%, and 75% under the curve is right between those two z-scores. So work out to here, and we get actually 0.6, and go up to here, which is like 0.075. So the z-score then that would trap 75% is a z-score of 0.675. If we go 0.675 standard deviations above the mean of zero, we'll trap 75% underneath. So that's how that works. So now the nerd will tell us that we can now know this guy as well as being 0.675. So there we go. Plug in the three known values and solve for the fourth unknown value. We want to know what score traps this proportion under the curve with this mean and this standard deviation. But we know now that that score would have to be that many standard deviations above the mean in order to trap that proportion. So now we plug stuff in. Put that known z-score in and solve for x. Now I don't care how you do this algebraically, you're going to multiply both sides by 2.5 or if you want to think of this as that's a fraction that's equal to this fraction. So cross multiply and you'll get this, however you do this algebraically. 2.5 times this puppy is 1.6875, that's what this equals. If we add the 65 to both sides, we get this right here. We'll talk in class more about the fact that all you're really doing is going this many standard deviations to the right of the mean. So take this times the standard deviation and add it to 65 and that's how the more comfortable math students would do this, but otherwise you guys follow the formula. So we get that x is equal to this, let's round it off to about 66.7 inches, so we could say that a height, a female height of about 66.7 inches is at the 75th percentile. Now let's do this on the calculator, but first let's understand why we call this an inverse normal problem. If we look at this situation, when we did normal CDF, or we were finding the area under the curve, we knew our score along the x-axis, and we didn't know the area under the curve. So we took this information, and we went through the z-score formula, putting in the three values that we knew, and we solved for the z-score, went to the table, or to the calculator, and we're able to find the area under the curve. So that's normal CDF, that's working in the positive direction, when we knew our score or our interval and we had to find the area under the curve. But what we're talking about now is going backwards. We're talking about knowing that we want to trap 88.5% 80, 80, 80 of the area, let's say, under the curve, and let's pretend that we don't know 
that this guy is a height of 68? Let's say it's unknown. So the problem would say, uh, find the score or the height that would trap 88.5% of the heights below it, or be at the 88.5th percentile. So what we're going to do now is go backwards. We'll know this, so we can find a z-score and put it there. We don't know the x. We do know mu and sigma. And that's the thing that we just got done doing, uh, right up here. Boom. That bad boy right there. We put in the z-score. We put in all that stuff, and we were able to find the height. So an inverse normal problem involves us going backwards through this process through that right there. But we can also use the calculator, and we would like to. So what we're going to realize is when we want to go backwards and find the score that traps a certain proportion, we're going inverse norm, the inverse normal function. Now look at me color coding again. We're going to put the proportion that we know uh, there. We're going to put the known mean there and the known standard deviation there. And when we hit enter, we're going to get the inverse normal, the, the height in this case, that is trapping that percentage under the curve. So we're going to find that actual x value. So we'll wrap this up by seeing what this looks like on the calculator. Again, you will find the inverse normal distribution in the same location. Let's just clear out the home screen. We're going to find it above distribution. So second distribution. We go to inverse normal, option three. And now, again, type in the area. See, the newer calculators are so nice, you don't even have to think. Old school, we got to know that we type in the proportion under the curve first, because that's what we know. And we're actually trying to find the score that's sitting there, or in this case, the height that's sitting there. Uh, we're going to type in the known mean of 65 inches in this uh, distribution of women's heights. And we're going to type in the known standard deviation of 2.5 inches. So we're going to paste this to the home screen so that, again, this is how it should look if you have an older calculator. Proportion of the curve, mean and standard deviation. Hit enter, and lo and behold, look at there, 68 inches. So we know that 68 inches is the height that would trap 88.5% below it. So look over this uh, video again if you need to, but this is how we use the calculator, and this is how we uh, rationalize going an inverse normal problem.